Hi, everyone. I'm Tracy. I'm Carol. And we are my Outlander Purgatory. Dot com. One of us always says that every time. Um, I have to. I just hear it in my head and I have to say it. I know. Carol. Tracy. This is the last episode of season three. This is the last song I'll ever write for you. Sorry, that just came into my head. I, I'm giving the holidays um, the last song I will sing is, Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. Uh, much like Lord John would do. But the very next day, you gave it away. <laughs> I'll take one of those for Christmas. <laughs> Um, Santa, I've been a really good girl. Will you bring me a Lord John, please? <laughs> my God, does, does that exist? Oh can we like God. buy? Is there an action figure from like a different show or something we can have buy and dress Lord, it up? Have much a Lord like John of your very own. Much like what? Oh, like the, Pocket Jamie. <laughs> much like, can you see Pocket Jamie in the? I wonder if we could get a Pocket Lord John. Pocket oh, Jamie's who is po- what's, po- what's happening with Pocket Jamie over there? Pocket Jamie is playing Santa, and um, the elf on the shelf is telling him what he wants. Has the elf on the shelf been a very good boy? Because <laughs> <laughs> Lord John has. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Carol! What are you drinking to celebrate um, our season finale? You guys, I just got home. It was a really long day. I completely forgot. To stop at the store and get my usual Santa Margarita. So, Tracy, wait till you see what I'm drinking tonight. Oh, boy, if I don't break the... Okay. So, I found this in the liquor cabinet. Kendall Jackson Pinot Gris. Is that how you say that? Yes. That's like a fan, the Italian way or the French way of saying Pinot Gris. Yeah. Um, that's supposed to be good stuff, isn't it? That's like the high-end stuff. Screw off cap. Not that that means anything, I know, but I just had to laugh because I'm like, oh my God, is this like one of those wines they serve when you go somewhere that has red or white? No, <laughs> I think Kendall Jackson is the higher end one. Oh, well, some, one of my one of my neighbors or friends then, thank you, because I guess you brought me something good. I don't know. Um, um, I'm drinking, what are you drinking? I'm drinking um, a wine that I really like called Cloud Break. Um, it is a nice, a nice oaky shardy. I think I've, I think I've drunk it here before. Um, it's a nice oaky shardy, and it's like nine bucks a bottle. So, even though it's cheap, I, like, like the fact that it's one of my favorite wines, and I'm drinking it to celebrate the season finale. Don't focus on the fact that it's only like nine bucks a bottle because it's not. And well, I was out to dinner before at a new restaurant um, in the next town over, and I think I paid um, about thirteen dollars. For the glass of wine that I drank there. Oh, I hate that. So this bottle of wine costs about three quarters of the glass of wine. And may I say, cheap pour of that glass. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was so cheesy. about mm, yeah, a little less than that. So there um, you go. I have to say that I have, a, there's a place in my town that charges 15, 15 or 16, I swear to God. For one glass of Santa Margarita. And I'm like, I was out with my friends and I'm like, what? I, I was throwing more money in at the end of the night because I was like, um, I just spent more than anyone. I mean, oh God. I mean, I can kidding? believe it though because like on the shelf, that, that wine's like 25 bucks a bottle. So I can actually believe it. Well, no. If you go to the expensive place that doesn't put out the coupons, it's 28 bucks. But if you go to like Costco right. or somewhere that has coupons and stuff, you can get it closer to 20, like 22, 21 and change. Which still is, that's why I'm like really kind of psycho about it because I don't drink a ton. Like, so I try to get the little bottles or just I open <clears> it. I just, then it makes me drink, you guys. I'll open the bottle and I'm like, oh. I have an open bottle of Mar- Santa Margarita. I've got to finish that. Yeah. Move out of the way, everyone. I have to drink. You should buy it in case form. I have done that as well at the Costco, the little place that next door to Costco, and it's cheaper too. Yes. Um, so anything else to report before we get into the season finale? 
No, let's just dive in. I don't. I don't feel like I'm, talking about real life. I feel like I. I'm so sad that this is. I wish there was going to be one more week to go because, like, literally this weekend, um, the season finale weekend is like my last weekend, and I have this like community stuff that I do, and my last weekend working on this project at work that I'm sure you guys are all like, oh my god, shut the f up about your project at work already. We know it sucks, so it's all going to be over. <laughs> But like, and then I can enjoy this a little more, but. I know the timing of this season, you guys. I feel awful because like I'm doing this video and I'm like, I've been in Philadelphia all day. I'm tired. I know. I know. I feel really bad. And like in like a couple of weeks, everything's going to be awesome. And your job and around here and I'm going to be like, woohoo. We'll have to make a video. That's that's when we'll have to start our other podcast that we need to like have our New Year's resolution to make because it's going to be a long Zam Droughtlander, y'all. Oh my God. Do we have any idea when it's ever coming back? We have no idea. They're filming now. They're filming season four. We've seen little bits and clips here and there and pictures and whatnot. Not me, you guys. I've been a ghost online. I haven't seen. Um. I've been invisible AF. But I've got to think that, like, the earliest it could be is next September. So i got to think it's, you know, nine months to a year. So, yeah, it's going to be a long droughtlander. But we are going to make sure that we make it feel shorter or at least funnier. There you go. You guys got to watch us. Don't leave us alone. I know. Stay with us. I know. I know. Okay. Shall we start now? Um, this week I watched I watched all I watched it almost twice. I like I stopped at the last five minutes or so because I sort of know what happens. And you're I, a but hoe I took pretty good notes. You, you were watching the horrific scene. You guys, I texted her and I was like, um, are you ready? And she was like, That scene just came on, so you are gonna have to wait five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Woo! Jump back. <laughs> Do you know I tried to text you, like, a gif of, like, you know, somebody going, like, <sighs> I can't find it, but I don't know what the search terms would be. I searched cigarette. I searched Post- smoking. I searched post-coital. post-coital. Nothing. I, Nothing. You stole my words. I was going to say post-coitus cig- post-coitus cigarette. No. Didn't, nothing. Nothing. So that was, like, the gifs on the, um, on the iPhone. No. Nothing. Dang. I just had to tell you that I was going to do that. It's not quite as funny as actually doing it. All right. Without further ado, let's dive into here because we have a lot to talk about. But Carol, you took notes too as well, right? I took too many notes because this episode was so cray cray. I think that's why I'm so tired. I'm exhausted from this episode watching it twice in the past 24 hours. It was so cray cray that I didn't, you know how sometimes you're like, all right, we don't, I don't need to get into that dialogue. I don't need, I can just, no, there was just no skimming. There was no, I just had to, every single thing that came out of their mouths is on this note. Yeah, no, well, I did that too. I typed a lot of dialogue because the dialogue was really great. Yeah. In a lot of places. Um, why could that be? Because it was written by Matt Roberts and Tony Graffia. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, good. Um, yeah, I was very, very, very happy to see that. Not like, not, and I don't want to like put down the other writers you know, I, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, the writers are new this season, and that's why. Da, 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 da. Well, you know, Matt Roberts and Tony Graffio were new too once. Um, but just the fact that they've been around since season one, they know the characters, this ain't their first time at the rodeo, you know, they had an advantage that I think a lot of writers did not have. So. I tried it. That's another reason I try to pay no attention because I don't want to get bogged down with. Oh, it wasn't them. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I just feel like I just watch the show and enjoy. And I, uh. okay, so Outlander thirteen, Outlander episode three thirteen. Our season finale is called "Eye of the Storm." Writers are Matthew Roberts and Tony Graffia, and the director making his directorial debut, I believe, with the Outlander series um, is Matthew Roberts. Um, I know that he is a second director or second unit director. So he's directed like a lot of the like, you know, I don't know if they'd call it B-roll or whatever. Um, But I don't think he's actually directed an episode. Well, then there you go. It was a fabulous job, a fabulous directing job. Um, A lot of really interesting choices and 
pretty seamless of an episode. Um, very well structured. So, did you do you, do you have Kevin overall rating, or do you not want to give that? I don't like. I don't rate. Okay. I, I, I I don't, don't rate. rate. I don't like to I, label things. I don't like. I don't, to, be I don't buy. I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want to be painted with that brush. I don't want to sell anything, buy anything, or process anything. I don't want to buy anything sold or processed. I don't want to process anything bought or sold. I don't want to buy anything. I, can't I already be got labeled. that one. Okay. Okay. You guys, okay. just in case if someone gets mad at us, that is from um, Say Anything. Right. With right. the lovely John Cusack. Right. And Iona Sky. Whatever happened to her? Oh my God! Actually, I saw her in a bar. John Cusack. I saw her in a bar once, and Tom was like, "For All real." Right. Don't flip that. Well, we were seeing her brother play Nancy Boy was the band, Donovan uh, Donovan Leach. Uh, it was Scott. Now I'm dating myself. This was the 90s. They were awesome, P.S. And she, and Tom goes, don't look now, but like, don't flip out. But I only Scott is right over there. And don't <laughs> and tell I her that you don't want to process anything bought yeah, and sold. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> totally. Well, well, the funniest thing is that anytime we've ever seen anybody like remotely famous, Tom will be like, because we were in some restaurant in Spring Lake one morning, like for Sunday brunch. And he's like, don't say anything. But there's Andrew Shu. And I'm like, first of all, why am I going to go up to him and be like, Andrew, are you going to eat that? Like, of course I'm not going to say anything to him. Well, he grew but up in anyway. My town, so I could probably see him at, like, you know, the, the Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. So when, I, who don't you see at the Dunkin' Donuts, I know. Tracy? When, when Iona Sky, when you saw her, did Tom go, don't say anything? <laughs> 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 um, That's I, funny. I, 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 could not believe I, I loved her because she was sitting in this hip bar in New York and she was in like an orange like hoodie sweatshirt and this was in like the 90s she was very cool yes. well I mean she appeared to be very cool I don't know the woman so yes. yeah that was when like I remember I worked in New York in the 90s and you used to see like um like Ethan Hawke running around all the time like at some bar seeing this band or that band whatever back in the day you see professional surfers where I live yeah <laughs> Okay. All right. So, um, we get our Easter egg and it was a very interesting Easter egg. I thought, um, I don't think we've ever had an Easter egg that was, that was kind of part, like kind of part of the show. Almost, oh, it almost worked in the way that Diane, that the prologues work in Diana's books. Yep. And it was very, what I wrote down is it was very Breaking Bad. Where like, which I loved because one of the, one of the great things about Breaking Bad is that it would always start like in the middle of whatever you're going to find out has been happening. Or at some point where you're just like, what the hell is going on? And you have no idea what it is. And then they go back and they kind of lead up to how they got there. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to find out like how that happened. So it was kind of the same way where obviously where you're seeing Claire is like towards the end of the show, but you don't know. I mean, at first when we were at the part where they were at the portal with the spring or whatever, I was like, Oh my God, is she going to go in? Is that where we're seeing this from? Um, and clearly it, it was not. It might be from a writing standpoint that they like to do a bookends thing that they like to sort of end with the way they started. <laughs> and they started that way. What do you mean? Oh, uh, wait, you mean in the episode or in the season? No, no, in the episode. Like, you know, what is happening? Well, we all saw it, so, right. you know. Right, but well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, She's underwater and she's washed up. You know what I'm saying? In the beginning and the end. So Right, right, I, and that's it, what I'm it, saying. It, that's why it was like Breaking Bad, because they used to do that all the time. But right, our well, Easter just, eggs normally don't, are, are normally some, like, little thing or incidental item or whatever that right. ends up having more meaning when you finally see the whole show. I'm going with the bookends theory. Um, but I like that. Yes. No, I agree. I agree. So, okay. We open on Claire and she's riding in the coach. Then they stop. Bossing and- everyone around. Oh. <laughs> I mean, the first 30 seconds of the show, she's like, Hurry! And I'm like, oh, here we go. It's Claire. Yep, 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 yep. She's like, why have we stopped? <laughs> she gets her English on when she gets mad. 
<laughs> um, so then she sees why they stopped because there's a big old parade <laughs> of, of walkers. Of... It was like it was like Walking Dead. <laughs> I was uh, like, there's a herd, run. <laughs> um, yes, she sees all of these, all of these people um, marching somewhere, kind of drumming, I think. And, you know, clearly the drivers of the coach, I think it's two drivers, but I kind of forget. Um, you know, they know what's up. They know what's, what's what here. And they know to stop and they know they to be sort of reverent. Be respectful. Be respectful, yes. yes. Miss Claire does not know that. She's just like, why have we stopped? I'm surprised she didn't like yell out the window and be like, get out of the way. (laughs) Right now. I need to get through here. I have important things to do. (laughs) I have to go talk about the future. (laughs) So anyway, everybody finally passes. They keep going again. um, And they arrive at Rose Hall and Claire's like, I will be in the slave quarters. If you pick me up, if you don't, if I don't come back, go and inquire about me. <sighs> Off she goes. <laughs> you know, Claire, didn't Uncle Lam ever teach you the magic words, please and thank you? No, I don't think I so. I don't think so either. And they serve a person well, Claire. You'd be good to remember that. Please yes. and thank you. Even yes. to the people who work for us, Claire. It makes yes. them feel very good. Yes. True. Okay. Um, so then we get to Fergus and Marsley, and they're at, like, whatever inn Claire and Jamie were staying at. I just love Marsley so much. I can't Oh, my even. God. I know. I, can't I know. I even. I can't even. Fergus Fraser. Fraser. Fergus Fraser. I'm your wife. Um, she's just so practical. She's like, Fergus is like, uh, I don't know. I don't even remember what he said. Like, you know, oh, this, 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 this. And Marcy's like, no, she probably just did this. Or no, we're not yes. doing that. Like, yes. no, yes. that's dumb. No. Yes. Oh, go. Oh, oh, I know what it was. Mr. Willoughby. What's, what is going on with Mr. Willoughby? And she's like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. He's a grown man. He can take care of himself. Snap out yeah. of it, Fergus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, snap out of it <laughs> and then he's like oh wait I have an idea I'm going to go um, I'm going to go uh, I have to be I have to be gone for a while stay here and wait for me and she's like huh. was he di- <laughs> what <laughs> is he all of a sudden from Transylvania <laughs> I see it reminded me it's almost like the situation was flipped from Pulp Fiction where um, instead of Bruce Billis going out and leaving the French girl there the French boy goes out and leaves the, like, you know, um, sassy American there. I want a pot belly. <laughs> and I don't have a pot belly. And a pot belly is so sexy. If I had one, I'd wear a t-shirt two sizes too small to accentuate it. I like blueberry pancakes. Will you get me blueberry pancakes? And <laughs> I have a very big pot belly right now. <laughs> pancakes every day for four months like I have, you will have a pot belly. <laughs> yes, yes. So continue. So Sorry, it guys. It's almost like that. Um, but no, Fergus is like, has an idea and he's going to go check it out. And Marcy's like, oh, pl- like, what part of I'm your wife and I get to tell you what to do and you have to listen to me all the time do you not understand? Mm-hmm. Should I say it in the French? Because I'll do it. Yeah. Um, so Fergus gets the message, and he... And I thought that was cute. He just, like, grabs her hand, and they run like, out. Together. okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. Uh, it's turning into, like, like an American sitcom yes, where yes, all dear. the men are complete idiots, and all the women... Fergus is are... turning into Kevin James. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so true. Oh. All the women... Like, Ian... Older Ian Murray is the only one allowed to be smart on the show. Like all, all the other husbands are just completely whipped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're back at the slave quarters and Claire's like, Ian, 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 Ian. <laughs> it just hit me. I don't know why. Was it, wasn't it funny? 
I was like, what are you doing? Like, is she going to throw a rock at the window? I felt like she was going to go, be very <laughs> We're hunting wild. Um, so she's looking around and looking around. And then she sees this dog sniffing yeah. around something. And I have to say, like, you expect kind of in, like, like maybe, a, you know, the slave quarters, they're clear, you know, it's clearly a poor area. You maybe, exp- you maybe expect, like, sort of a mongrel kind of looking dog, right? This dog looked like, you know, it could be, like, in Elle Woods' purse somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is the cutest dog I ever saw. Well, maybe Galus, a.k.a. <clears throat> Mrs. Abernathy. Lost the dog. I mean, it might be Mrs. Abernathy's dog because it was adorable. It was like this cute little like mini poodle or like frou-frou-y kind of dog. And I was just like thinking to myself, like, shouldn't this be like, you know, kind of like a muddy kind of dog? Do you, do you think she puts it in a little bag with mesh on the side when she travels <laughs> through the stove? <coughs> <laughs> I wonder if an animal can travel through the stones. That's interesting. Good I question. We'll ask Diana. I don't know. I don't know. It's very interesting. So anyway, so the dog is nosing around somewhere, and Claire is like, Claire gives the dog this like really weird look. Probably like, you're so cute. What are you doing around here? Um, and she goes over, and she sees. Well, I don't know if she sees it, but we certainly see feet sticking out of something, which is it never was, good when you're seeing it was, feet sticking out of bushes. Yeah, no, it was gross. Um, and I was like, "Why is he there?" And he was like, "Covered up in hay." And I was like, "Why bother?" I know. Everybody around well, here mean, knows what's going on. Like, first of all, okay, this is Jamaica. Isn't it like a hundred degrees during the day? I'm thinking that like. Um, if you have a like a dead body out just out there sitting in the middle of the hot sun for more than a day, it ain't no dog that's gonna be like nosing up around to this dead body. <laughs> I'm thinking that the like living creature that's gonna be around there are flies. I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh. Yeah. It's gonna be pretty gross. And I think Claire's gonna be able to tell that he's over there, not from the feet sticking out and not from cute little, you know, um, a bijou frijon, whatever it's called, nosing around, but by the stink. Would you not agree? Yes, I totally would. But anyway, I'll suspend disbelief for now. So clearly, this is one of the boys that Gillis has been, you know, enamored of, and its throat is slit, and, you know, that's not good. So she sees this, and then all of a sudden, <gasps> Somebody gets her from behind. And that's all we see of Claire. <clears throat> Next, we move to Gilas, and she's interrogating Ian. Oh, and he is awesome in this scene. Ian is just he, so feisty in this scene. He gives it right back to yeah. her, and he's like, then get home with it. Oh, okay, that was the worst accent ever. Get home with it. I, it was so perfect. It was so great. Her. You can tell Ian has had enough of this. Ian is not slept. You know Ian is a growing boy and probably eats every other hour and has not gotten yeah. no food. He's hangry as F. He's yes. hangry all, AF. All he got was like 3 o'clock tea time. Right. He has not had anything substantial. Right. Um, Those little cucumber sandwiches are not going to hold him over for very long. And the cake is so dry, too, that he had last week. So, you know. Oh, that was good. Thanks. I tried. Um, yes, yeah, so I could. I, could, I want to, like, listen to Lottie Verbeek, just her accent. Her accent is just so cool. Like, it's so. I don't know. Well, because she has a completely different accent, <clears throat> though. It's like But Dutch it lends itself. It's, yeah. it's, it's sing songy enough that she can do the Scots accent pretty right, well. Right, right, right. Um, so. I totally forgot too that she was in was she was she in last season in the present in nineteen sixty eight or this season in nineteen sixty eight? No, she was in last season. Like when Claire started saying, you know, we <clears throat> saw you go through, I was like, Did we see it on the show or do I just know that? No, we saw it on the show. Yes. We saw it it in season two. It was at the end of season two. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. So this is last week is the first time that she's been in this season. Right. Um, 
So yeah, but Ian is just like he's very sassy. He's very feisty. He's like you know, he's salty. He's don't have me. I'm tired of you. Yeah. Like whatever. If, I don't, if you're gonna kill me, kill me. I'm yeah, tired of this nonsense. Just get this over with, bro. Right. Right. Um. So then she, uh, I don't know. Oh, the the little uh, the maid lady like, whispers in her ear, and she's like, you know, get 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 him out, hide him. Right. <clears throat> because it's time for the next prisoner to arrive. Right. And the next prisoner is Claire. Yes. So she does not know what to do with this. I don't think she knew it was going to be Claire. And she's like, oh. Get him out of here. Claire. Um, should I be mad at her? Or should I not be mad at her? Or should I pretend I'm not mad at her? I'm I think she's pretend. more of get Ian out of here so well, Claire yeah, doesn't yeah. see him. Uh, no, I don't think she knew. I don't think she, did she know it was, I think she just got, get out, Ian out of here so people don't know I'm like a boy kidnapping freak. Uh, that's what I, that's the, that's the, you know, impression I got. Like, whether it was Claire or anybody else. Um, but it is Claire. She looks at Claire and she's like, I don't quite know what I have to make of this, but I'm going to go along with it. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, my manservant was so mean to you, but I just. I know. love that manservant. <laughs> in my notes, he's now manservant in manservant. every single yes. thing. Hercules. Herc. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry, Herc. Herc was so ma- mean to you. Um, but you're my friend and, you know, it's all good. Um, so they chat for a bit. Claire says, Jamie's been arrested. And I don't know what to do. Um, and Gillis is like, oh, sit yourself down. And, you know. Ooh, the way she it was so creepy, the way she was like, you're welcome here anytime. We're friends. We're friends. We're friends, you and me, Claire. Ooh. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. No, um, you're not friends. I was just glad she had that wig off, you know? I was like, <laughs> oh, it's all good with Gila. As long as you're not wearing the Pat Nixon wig, it's all good. I still don't understand her hair color. It wasn't, like, gray. She used to be red. Like, I don't get well, she's it. she's supposed to be older now. I so, didn't think it looked gray. I thought it looked blonde. I thought it looked I thought young. It looked blonde, I didn't... blonde too. Like her aging, I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess it was sort of grayish depending on the light. I think they just wanted to keep her looking sexy and they were too afraid if they went too gray, she would look too old and they wanted to keep her kind of young looking with that whole fountain of youth slash blood thing. And... Are you saying gray isn't sexy? <laughs> no, I hope not. <laughs> Why do you think my hair gets blonder? <laughs> uh, my, so my blonde is getting lighter and lighter. I think he's like, oh, she's got some more gray. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's been, that would be an, an interesting thing to watch all of our videos and watch me get grayer and grayer because I haven't had time to color it. Um, okay. So next we move to Jamie and Captain Babyface. And okay, okay, who I am now calling Captain Lieutenant <laughs> Or CLB for short. CLB. Oh, I like that. Okay. So, Jamie, oh, you know, it, it, we just get sass here. We get sass there. We get sass everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Um, Jamie is all like, um, you know, sassing up on Captain Babyface. And Captain Babyface is like, oh, well, I'm glad that you're so jovial. Like, you know. Considering you're gonna, you know, the whole you're gonna die thing and all. <laughs> um, and then who shows up? But some red coat heavies. We're not quite sure though, but they are gonna take over this whole matter. And you know, <clears throat> like you're sitting there watching it, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you know, we're sitting in LJ's office. And about to begin the best scene of all time. Oh my god. This scene was so tasty. So, so great. Uh-huh. I don't even know. I don't even know uh-huh. where to begin with that. I don't even know. I where could to have begin. just give me that scene every every episode I and know. I'm happy. I no know. matter what happens, no matter what you might omit, I'm okay with <laughs> this scene. I know. I know. Or the like is included. First of all, can we throw into our our LJ soup of um? Are you are you talking to somebody who's gonna maybe? Ian has Ian oh, has Ian. my own wee Ian has noticed um 
um, this elf on the shelf has mysteriously moved and is sitting on Pocket Jamie's lap. Uh. Good night, Penny. Love you. Um, <clears throat> all right. Into our into our LJ soup of hotness. I must add, we so far we have Thelma and Louise era Brad Pitt. We have James Marsden. We have Rob Lowe. I have to add a touch, a sprinkle, um, a dash, if you will, of, I don't remember his name in real life. It'll hit me at some point, but um, the bad guy from Titanic. I've got a child. <laughs> what? I'm Just not a, seeing a dash, that. A dash, a dash. That's what I'm saying. Like, not, like, like, there's like a look, there's like a part in that scene, in the scene we're talking about now, where you see Lord John's face, and it is Rob Lowe. Like, I, I was like, whoa! Oh, and his nose. Yes. yes. You can't take your eyes <laughs> off the yes. nose. I have written down, <clears throat> and, and <clears throat> uh, wait, have you gotten there yet? I mean, can I talk about the first yeah. scene when they show him? Yes. And, and he's taking Jamie into custody, and CLB asks, you know, by whom? And I have, we see, dun, dun, dun. Lord the John. <laughs> I can't believe I've never taken my Lord and put it together with Lord John. Lord the John. <laughs> oh my God. Um Oh, it's just so great. It's so great. It, it, I just it, wrote it, down Lord John's office, LJ dropping mics everywhere. <laughs> it was perfection i because you know what i think it was probably I'm trying to think was it the first time we've really seen lord john in a position of like power even though he was in a position of authority in wentworth he was brand spanking new he was not seasoned you know what i mean when they sent him to right and it was kind of a demotion the- for him too Yes, this is like, this is what Lord John does. And he, boy, did he do it spectacularly. The way he's just so subtly would say, you know, um, Lieutenant. Like, oh, I mean, like, Captain, I'm sorry. He's like, he's like Lieutenant, uh, uh, sorry, I mean, Captain. <laughs> because it's true. I'm like, you know what? This guy, I, I have... Lord John lets him know not so subtly that he's in charge and CLB is little more than a deckhand. I mean, <laughs> honest to God, what was he third in line? Yes. And the, yes. And the captain died and the... And the next guy died. And yeah. he, so he's right. I mean, this guy, how dare like, he? He's the Kiefer Sutherland of the porpoise, you know, at the designated oh survivor. <laughs> but you know what? Now, I don't watch that. But I have to tell you that... Um, I am wondering if we are going to be seeing CLB again because he's got to be scorned. I don't think so. I mean, <clears throat> given where we've ended up, when we end up, when we end the, um, the episode and we're in Georgia, I think, I think Captain Babyface is just, you know, turning it's- tail, tail between his legs, hightailing it back to the UK. Oh, I, just hoping I would, that Lord John doesn't write a report. I would not be surprised would, if we ever see him again. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But no, you are absolutely right. And the whole title rank thing was so great and so hilarious. Where Lord John was all like, you know. Well, you know, oh, yes, there's pesky Navy titles. I can never keep them straight. <laughs> you know, in the Army, we just basically, it's much easier to do because you get the title that you have earned. <laughs> and you were like, <laughs> it's a little hot in here. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is because Cat Baby Face, you just got burned. Yeah. And, and, and then he's, when he says, like, like then he... <laughs> Then, then Lord the John has no time for this, and and Lord John is like, that was on water. You are now on land. 
Good day, sir. <laughs> you can tell when Lord John like loses his shiz and he's just like, yeah, I'm done with you. I'm done yeah. with you. At, Lieutenant. At this, at this moment, you're like, you know what? Well, I won't say because that's not a bad spoiler. But oh, no, we've met Al. We've met Al. Oh, we know Al. I was going to say at this moment, we know Lord John's got a little bit of hell in him, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Hell, <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm so saying that from now on. <laughs> you know my love of Hal. Oh, Hal, uh, yeah. Hal, yeah. You yeah. know Hal has trained Lord John well. Um, oh, and then the best the best line, I was just writing lines down here and there. Um, when he was like, so your claim is based on the scurrilous gossip of the lower deck. That was just <laughs> so great. That Matt Roberts and um, Tony Graffia, oh, well played. That whole well scene. played, but honestly, who could have ever delivered that line as well as he did? What is his name? Barry? David What's Barry. His... What David is it, David? Barry. David Barry. Oh, my God. I swear to God, he's like the greatest actor. Where's this guy been in my life? Where's this guy been all my life? I know. He's amazing. I know. I know. He's so great. He so sort of gives, gives everybody a run for their money. I'd like to see more of him and Claire together with their little. Mm. Um, and then, and meanwhile, Jamie's watching him like. <laughs> Jamie's Jamie, like. Jamie, Jamie's Jamie, like. Okay. Jamie, okay. Jamie's you like, know what? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. This ain't looking oh, yeah. like a bad. If Claire ever goes back to the stones again. <laughs> yeah. This well, ain't looking like a bad option anymore. <laughs> I have written down that. I'm oddly wishing at this point that Jamie and Lord John were a couple. <laughs> I told you, I want a show where Lord John and Jamie solve crimes. They fight crime. They're like detectives and they fight crime. Oh my God. That's they, the show they, I would watch. They just have such chemistry, the two of them. I know. And, and yeah, they seriously just bounce <laughs> off each other really well. And Jamie's sitting there watching and I think Jamie's, developing quite a respect for Lord John right at this moment. Not that he didn't respect him before. He absolutely did. But right. Lord John's always been a nice guy who who cared for him. But now Lord John is a force to be reckoned with. And he's realizing like, ooh, snap. Like, I, I, I like, yeah. I know. And, I know. Um, and, and um, <clears throat> like you said, Jamie's just sitting there like watching him like, mm-hmm. You go right ahead. It's fun to watch Jamie's face during all of this when you can yes, see it. Yes, and Jamie's thinking, like, it's good to have friends in high places mm -hmm. right about now. Mm -hmm. So that was just awesome, yeah. When he, when when Lord John finally says, thank you, Lieutenant Leonard, and just goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, it was just so great. It was so, that was, that scene was When we fantastic. talk about the hurricane... Pick up that microphone again and do that when we talk about the hurricane. Okay. Because that's what it sounds like when you do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Captain Babyface, you know, tail between his legs, runs out of there before he, like, starts to cry over Lord John being mean to him. Um, Jamie's like, you done it again, my friends. Save my life again. And Lord John's like, as if I could do anything else because you're just so hot. I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and Lord really John's sick. like, get out of here. <laughs> Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> so they part ways. Um, I thought maybe they would shake hands or something, but maybe Jamie knows better. Maybe Lord John knows better than to shake his hand because that's just going to be like a month of just like, I'll never wash the sand again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and so we leave Lord John with his little sapphire pinned to his little lapel or whatever. and Just to remember their friendship. Their friendship. Oh my God, I love him so much. David Barry, I'm hoping you come back to us because you are just so awesome. And it's been fantastic. You have been every bit as good, if not better, than Mark May from last season. Mark me. Mark me. And we he is he is very much missed, Mark me. Uh he is, but I mean Lord John, it's like 
I have such a new appreciation. I think I'm running upstairs right now to read the Lord John books. Oh my God, you should read the Lord John books. Well, I sort of did read the brother. What was the Blade one? Brotherhood of the Blade is really good, and the Scottish Prisoner is really good. Those are the two. If you're just like, if you're like, I don't want to read about Lord John unless Jamie's in it. Brotherhood of the Blade and Scottish Prisoner are the ones you want. Um, and they take they all take place. In that time when Jamie is at Ellesmere. Right. Um, and they're really good. And, you know, Lord John gets to have some fun of his own. So, so there you go. Okay. Are we ready to move on to our next yes. scene? Which is Claire and Gilles chatting at a little table. I was just like, Claire, do not drink the tea my friend oh my god i Hopefully know you you come from the future you've watched tv you've seen perry mason you've seen you know i don't know every other like 1960s detective show you know you've probably seen a james bond movie because i forgot when the first one was but maybe it was around or there. or okay don't drink the tea yes or or you're almost afraid claire might be like okay i kind of liked you <laughs> so <clears throat> Gillis is starting to get mad again Gillis is mad because she thinks the Claire is screwing Scotland of its own king from what Gillis says and I don't remember the exact thing that she says right. but she seems to be referring to someone specific to be the new king of Scotland or of England like the new Scottish king of England do we know who that is? no or am I just like making that up? Well, like, yes, she's talking about us. I mean, she's ta- she's saying like the prophecy says that a two hundred year old baby has to be killed for a Scot to sit on the throne again. But however she said it, made it sound like she was referring to a specific Scot, like because she was like, oh, it won't be the Bonnie Prince Charlie because he's like I... totally you know out of there now. You um, study your like, history. There's, a, there's another one now. Yes, it's like a, another steward. I can't remember research because it, it research it i know i've read it and do i remember no i mean it's they not went, like jamie right um no god no and also and i thought of this today too does she call him i mean she called him your fox cub does she call him that just because it's like some weird thing she would call some guy or does she call him that because he's um the the other uh, in the line of love it with like the young fox it's either that, yeah, it's probably that, and also he's got the red hair, too. Oh, like, like a fox. a fox. Yeah, okay. it's okay. probably all of the above. Okay, okay, just some things I was wondering about. Um, okay, so meanwhile, Claire's like, yeah, she's nuts. She's cray-cray. Gotta get out of here. Well, I just love that once again, how many times a season or in the series are we going to hear her say, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, and I was like, flashback. <laughs> That's why we know how to say it. Why are you here? Yeah. Um, so the other question I have is, so they're blithely going on about like going through the stones and going into the future and 1968 and look at these photographs and like Hercules. The manservant. Right <laughs> Hercules, the manservant like, is just, just, I thought the same thing. I was like, somebody signed a non-disclosure. <laughs> I know, and I mean, like, you know, nobody's aware of that. Like, like, I mean, okay, so maybe Gil. Well, no, they're both from the future. Like, all right, maybe Gillis is like whatever. He doesn't like. He's not really a person. Claire wouldn't think that. Like, wouldn't like Claire be aware that like there's a like? I just would think that like Claire would be so on her guard about talking about this kind of stuff that she would be like, you know. I'm not talking about this with this like dude here. You know, I don't care who it is. Right, right, right. You know? No. Um, I it, think she knows that it's, are you kidding? Like at this point, it's pretty dire. Um, so I don't think she cares. <laughs> it, it was just a bit odd for me. Okay. So Claire's like, I am from the, I did go back to the future and I can prove it. Here are these photographs. Um, and Gills is looking at them and she, and she realizes that she like knows Brianna. She met her before because she remembers this person that she met like two seconds. Yeah, when she 25 was 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And she was speaking, right? She was speaking at the college. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, 
So oh, no, was she just handing out literature or something? <clears throat> no, I think she gave like a little speech, but it might have been like in the foyer or something at the college. Okay, okay. Um, she gave, but she gave like a little rallying speech, and I forget right. where the, where she was at the pub, but she met them up with them at the pub. Um, so Gil is looking through the photos, and she surreptitiously takes one of them, and you know what she's going to do with that? She takes what she wants, Gillis. She's like the um, honey badger. Yes. And then she... I liked when she said about her hu- her husband when Claire said, we saw you go through, and, and she said, you know, oh, he was one of my favorites. <laughs> she likes to, you know, marry them and... <laughs> yep, yep. She makes and she kills. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was all... So then at that point, Gilles is like, yeah, oh, I've been playing this all wrong. Mm-mm-mm-mm. I got to suck up and suck up hard. She's like, oh, Claire, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry I've been, like, so weird about, like, you're my friend and whatever, I'm going to go to bed, you can, like, stay wherever you want here. Yeah, whereas but... five seconds ago you were just telling Hercules to do it for what you want. <laughs> oh, now, oh, okay, now we're Oh, friends. my God, my bad, Claire, my bad, yeah. sorry. Well, oopsie. <laughs> Misunderstanding, oops. Um, so Claire's all like, yeah, this is not good. So I just have to interject that Rose Hall is gorgeous. Like they kept, they showed an outside shot at that point. And, mm-hmm. and you know, the interior too, like that room where Gillis was, oh God, I just, I mean, I love like tropical homes like that. Where Like, like can't you just be happy living there? I know, right? Like why? Like, like okay, yeah. Okay, so, so there's not a Scottish, you know, a Scot on the, on the throne. Yeah, but I live in this really gorgeous house. I love <laughs> how everyone all the just... time. I love how everyone just ends up in Jamaica, Mom. Um, so, like everyone, she lives there. Lord John comes to be governor. Margaret are there. Margaret's there, and yeah, everybody just yep. goes to Jamaica, Mom. Yep, yep, yep. So okay, so Gillis goes to bed, and Claire's like looking around, trying to get out. Everything's locked. She spots Ian outside. She says, "Like it's young Ian." She goes to break down the door and in walks Jamie. So he has been released from prison. Um, Lord John, you know, signed whatever he needed to sign. He's done. Um, they go after young Ian and Claire's like, he went in there that way in the direction of the drumming. <laughs> and so we wander down and we find some sort of big ceremony going on. Oh my God, more walkers. With lots of drums, dancing, and lots of... Which was kind of cool to watch. Yes. I have to say that I thought it was really effective to have Claire, um, like, sort of watch this and be reminded of the dancers around Craig Danoon. Craig, Craig Danoon. Craig Danoon. Craig um, Danoon. Because not only was Claire, I was. I was watching this and I was like, this is just like season one when they were in Scotland and the girls were dancing and then all of a sudden she's and I'm like whoa but the whole thing was really effective the way they did it the music I mean Bear Bear McGreary is like I have that written down very cool the way they merged Bear's old Scottish dance music with the tribal dance music yes very cool yes that whole part was very 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 effective um music was great and it really like got you thinking about like why are they doing this? What are they celebrating? Or what are they marking? Or what are they, you know, is it um, like one of the fire feasts or, or whatever where the portal is open? Do they know mm-hmm. about the portal? Mm-hmm. Have they ever been to the portal? Right. Um, yeah, it was very cool. It was very effective. I dare say I, 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 the way it was presented in Claire's mind like that, where she, she sort of melded the two dancing, I liked better than the book. I just th- uh, I thought. I, well, yes. And, and you got to remember that she went through the stones. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. she's the traveler. So right. she's feeling exactly the way she felt when she was at Craig Nadine. Right. right, Craig, right, right. Craig Nadine. Craig Nadine. Craig um, So, yeah. So they get caught, of course, because they're not very, like, sly. Um, but Mr. Willoughby shows up. He's there. And he vouches for them. He's like, they're with me. It's all good. 
And he says that he's there with Margaret because they're in love and they're going to I like did think that was love. funny the way he just, all of a sudden, there's Mr. Mr. W. Mr. W. There's, it was, there's that there's was a little, you know, a lot of people were complaining last week that like the whole, people either loved the Mr. Willoughby and Margaret stuff or hated the Mr. Willoughby and Margaret stuff. And the people that hated it were like, you know, they, they don't know each other. They've never met. They just like looked at each other and they're in love. Like, what's up with that? And I have to say, I'm going to give it a pass. Like, to me, it was like a Tony and Maria moment. Have we met before? I know we have not. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, like, it happens. I mean, sometimes in movies, people just like look at each other and they're in love. And, you know... I'm good with that. I'm good with I that. I was fine with that. I loved them. I'm good with that. I don't know that I buy the whole, like, oh, well, you know, they're having this, like, tribal ritualistic ceremony, but they heard that, like, Margaret, was a, that Margaret, this, like, Scottish woman, was a good seer, so they were like, calm down and, like, tell our fortunes. I'm, I'm more willing to believe that they looked at each other and fell in love than I am to believe that, like, they were like, oh, you know, Miss Margaret, will you, like, come and, like, tell us the future? Right. Um, but, you know, whatever. But, and she is, in the book, she's there, too, for sort of different reasons. Um, I, the book part is just, like, a part where I just, I kind of, it goes off. You, you zone off. Yeah. I know. I know. It's This was actually, this was actually really streamlined and I think probably easier to appreciate than the book was. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the Margaret, Mr. Willoughby there was just a little weird to me. I, I, you know what though? A lot of this has been like that where they just show up and that's because it's a book. Like books are very dinner. Well, no, you know what I, mean? I mean, it's, it's how many times have I talked about true blood where, you know, the, the, uh, the books are totally almost downright silly in spots but they're fun and you're reading them and right. and then the show is a totally different situation they can't it's they have to have it happen i don't know why they decided to go with the i, I you know sometimes I, mean, I figure they ha, they feel like they have to keep the margaret storyline because it's in the book i liked it better i don't want to say better but yeah i enjoyed it with mr willoughby i thought that was great i think they're doing that in spots where they're merging right two characters right. and and i i thought it was believable that you know i thought she, it was believable that they would be in love that they although would, i wish we would have seen a little bit of them in love like he's like she understands me like no other woman really let's see it because well, she's not even she hasn't even paid attention to you and it's only it's it has it's to, it's totally tony and maria it's been three hours it's been three hours but but Maybe you four. but you're comfortable with it because you're disgusted with Archie is that her brother's name yeah. Campbell yeah. with the way he, her brother treats her <laughs> and you know she's going to be taken care of with Mr. Willoughby and you know that these are two like great minds and these their souls are so you know the way she tells the future she she's she she knows things about people she really freaked Jamie out with a rabbit comment you know with Culloden mm -hmm. so um I I think yeah I think that she I, to me it made sense they both have the same type of way about them. I think that it made sense for them to be together to me in my mind like last week that made total sense I was like because Mr Willoughby I mean I won't spoil anything but his storyline also sort of goes off the rails and gets kind of weird in the book. Her storyline goes off the rails and gets kind of weird in the book I I remember correctly. So I did like the two of them together but yeah. but. The fa but the one thing that was different was putting the two of them together kind of eliminated the reason why she was at the ritualistic tribal thing to begin with. Mm -hmm. So they had to figure out a way to get her there. And they right. and the way that they chose was just basically like, oh, they heard about that. She's a great fortune teller and they wanted her to come. Well, that was kind of dumb because I don't think they ever would really hear about her, you know. Yeah, it just, I don't think it would happen that way. But whatever, that's how they, that's how it happened. It's all good. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so Mr. Willoughby and Margaret are going to live happily ever after, just like Tony and Maria, except that Tony and Maria didn't really live happily ever after, so. 
Ah, ano ni Bulo sa lahat ni Sam? Ina for you, for you, for you. you. <laughs> I love that movie so much. I haven't seen that movie in a million years. I gotta watch it again. I haven't either. Um, I want to live in America. Okay, for me in America. Everything's free in America. For us, my fear in America. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we you should forget. do it. That's what it is. You forget. I live in America. <laughs> Oh, the other bastards. A boy like that who kill your brother. But get that boy and find another. One of your own kind. Stick to your own kind. I'm getting serenaded with West Side Story. Could be all blah blah. <laughs> is, is Tom going to make any remarks this evening? Tom just said, a boy like that. <laughs> To know. <laughs> <laughs> when you're a jet, you're a jet. A little wet. Maybe we should do a video in the off season where we just perform a side story. <laughs> you know what we have to do? We have to pull out our old Jamie and Claire, um, Barbie and Pocket Jamie from like eight years ago when we had them on camera. Uh huh. And we had, you were reciting, we were reciting limes. Oh, Claire. You, you sound like some, like, degenerate. I don't know what to do. Yeah, you're like, I gotta be gentle about it. And then we were just throwing the Barbies, like, all over the That's in a video, you guys, from, yeah, like, eight so years great. ago. Okay. So, anyway, they're like, well, have you seen Ian? No one's seen Ian now. So... Margaret is so bizarre. They see Margaret. So Margaret's bizarre. like, at first she's like, oh, it was so great to see you at the governor's reception. And they're like, um, yes. And Claire's so, like, you speak? You speak <laughs> normally? normally? And oh my God, t- in this episode, I know you mentioned this when we saw her first, but I was seeing like Shrek's wife all over the place tonight. She's, she's oh my Shrek. God. She's, she's so. Abando. <laughs> she she's is so, life. so Mrs. Track. It's not even funny. I totally need to go find pictures of her <laughs> in real life because you know she looks totally different. Like um, Downton Abbey I know, I know. or Game of Thrones when you look them up and they're like gorgeous on some runway. I like, mean, Mrs. you know. What's her name? The, uh, the, you know, the housekeeper or whatever is like hot in real life. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So she's like totally normal, talking about the party, whatever. Then somebody mentions Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Abernathy, and she becomes lunatic. She becomes wild. She becomes a madman. Um, she starts spouting all sorts of gibberish, but the gibberish kind of makes sense. She starts talking about the rabbit, and you know, in the in the winter or you know on the field in the war and the blood, whatever she said. And Jamie's like. Holy Jamie's shit. like, let's go. Like, woo. Jamie, you Jamie's get... like, woo. <laughs> How do you know that? Yeah. Um, and then she starts talking about the bird on the windowsill. And then the entire that... audience of Outlander was like, oh. Um, <laughs> remember remember, we had like an hour long discussion. I know. About the I know. Bird? What does this mean? What does this mean? Well, Claire does say, like, at some point, like, in, yeah. uh, I forget what episode, like, yes. I used to, like, hear the bird on the windowsill and spot it was right. talking to me. Right. Um, so. You know, she sees the bird, and she thinks that she she's like, and it was him talking to you. It wasn't really the bird. And then she's like, wait a minute. Mommy? Daddy? <laughs> I she's knew like, it was you. Daddy, I knew it was you. <laughs> I love you. And I was just like, Mr. Oh. Willoughby, are you sure about this? <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, you got time to back out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what was going on there. Because Mrs. Shrek, she's kind of cuckoo. <laughs> but you picked up on that, right? What, that she was kind of cuckoo? No, she's Brie. She's being, she's hearing and being Brie right now. That's why she looks at Jamie and is like, I knew it was you. And she's like, I love you. And then she looks at Claire and goes, oh, like, mom, like, mommy or mom totally or whatever. I totally get that. And you know what? That happens in the book, too. And I'm like. She's Brie. <laughs> Well, I don't even remember it from the book, but she's Brie is coming through. She to- so, totally. That's she's, totally. Yeah. She's, she's 
Okay, here's what I hear when I think of the scene. Oh, my love. <laughs> She's Whoopi Goldberg, who Tracy has also seen in the supermarket. I have seen, like, Whoopi Goldberg once told me um, where I could find the Ritz crackers in our supermarket, <laughs> in our local supermarket in town. Whoopi is very helpful. Whoopi, um, I, can, I, can, I can confirm that Whoopi does her own shopping. And I can confirm that Whoopi looks exactly like Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> like, you ain't gonna miss Whoopi Goldberg when she's yeah. like coming at you, pushing her cart down the aisle. Oh my God, of, I would freak. Of, of the um, Ashley Marketplace. Um, no. But she's very yeah, nice. Yes, so this is Brie coming through. I did not. And I have read the book, you guys, and that happens in the book. Totally didn't get it. Was I the only one, or did you guys not get it either? Tell us in the well, comments. Something about dad and mom sort of gave it away. <laughs> no, I just thought she was being crazy. I mean, she's all like talking other crazy shit. I just thought, she, oh, wow. And doesn't You're she awesome. even say like, I miss you to Claire? Like, mom, I, lo I miss you and I love you too or something. I don't know. But she says to Jamie like, oh, it's you. And she's like, oh, I, you know. But they didn't, con like, like, I'm surprised they didn't talk about it. But the know? thing that freaked me out was then she's like, the monster, the monster's coming to get me. And I thought, okay, uh, did she just like all of a sudden turn into we Ian? Like the, cause, cause she's there with her. But then I think with him, but I know, um, um, Galus, Brie knows somehow that Galus is coming. I mean, this is subconscious stuff we're talking about here, but you know, Galus is coming for Brie, right? At this moment, Galus is coming for Brie. She's trying to, She's got her salt pack out and her picture of Brie. It's Brie is Carol Ann in the television set right now. <laughs> here, here. Mommy. I can't find you, Mommy. I can't. <laughs> Go into the light. There is peace no, and serenity can't. in the light. The light was bad. <laughs> I mean, Brie is Carol Ann right now. I thought she oh. was, when she was talking monsters, I just thought she was talking about Archibald. No, she's talking about and the fact that Galus, Galus is coming to get her. All I keep hearing is Ed Murphy <laughs> saying, oh, Bunny's coming to get me. You guys, I'm so literal. Oh, my God. I'm the worst. I'm so literal. I totally, like, totally did not get that. And again... I've read the book, and that happens in the book, as I'm remembering right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, anyway, um, meanwhile at the fire, um, there's a little chicken that's, like, getting the shaft oh. here. And then we have another little parallel thing going on where Archie, like, shows up, and he's like, you're coming with me? And she's not. Margaret's like, no, I'm not. And he's like, yes, you are. And Mr. Willoughby's like, no, she's not. And Archibald's like, yeah, I'm going to beat you with this stick until you come. And Mr. Willoughby's like, no, you're not. And he's like, beep, beep, beep. And Mr. Willoughby gets him and is like, Kh. and, you know, that's the end of that. They take the chicken. They go, Kh. and that's the end of that. Um, you know, and just all. Pretty disgusting hell. drinking. The <clears throat> all hell's breaking loose. Meanwhile, Jamie and Claire, like, just stop some random guy. And they're like, where's the band And he's like, oh. That. It's just like the um the Hawaii guy in um in Mr. Hanalei, old Mr. Hanalei on the Brady Bunch, saying like, "Oh, idol, bad, very bad." The guy, oh my God, right? Thing. Yes, the guy says the yes same because thing. because the boy died there. Forgot that Claire calls Jamie and says about the two hundred year old baby because uh, what's his name? Archie says something about the 200 year old baby in the prophecy. And Claire's like, uh, Jamie, <laughs> because that's what makes them, that's what makes them realize that they have to go find Galus right this very second. Cause and she's I really, I still, I'm so fixated on the fact that I totally did not see the whole Brie thing, Brie speaking through a Margaret thing. <clears throat> like, am I just really that dumb? Like, should she have, like, changed her voice a little bit or, like, she changed her? She did. She sounded um, American. I just thought she sounded weird. <laughs> no, she didn't have her accent. And she sounded very sweet like this. I have to listen to it again. Because I just, I mean, I, I, I mean, 
In my defense, I watched it last night late, like at 11.30 on my iPad in my bed, and the second time just now, and I was in a hurry, and, you know, I just, at that point, I was like, can we just get rid of all this weird stuff so we can get to the promised land that happens in about 15 minutes? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, all right, so anyway, they find out where Abandui is, they head into Abandui, Oh my god, I'm so happy I never again have to hear anyone go, Abandui! 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 Um, so, Jan- Claire's like, you know, it might suck me up, Jamie. Like, I might, you know... <gasps> this upset me. Right they now. had, like, a major moment again. It's oh, every five minutes, it's like, listen, if I don't come back... <laughs> listen, kay. Jamie, I'm going to the apothecary. If I don't come back... <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, I'm, I'm going, going to the to... outhouse. <laughs> yeah, if I don't come back. <laughs> if I get, He's like, if the toilet happens to be a portal and I get sucked in, know that I love you. <laughs> Excuse me. How did you like when he was like, we lost faith. We're not going to lose Bree too. Well, I was very happy because he was He concerned. cares. <laughs> oh, Jamie, you care. <laughs> did it take Bree like actually talking to him through, you know... Like magic to, for him to care? No, I don't know. <laughs> People are gonna yell at me for this. But that was like but I know he that smirk on his face. Like we're not gonna lose her too. <laughs> like, is he? He just mentioned faith. Like this isn't. A, I literally sat up while I was watching. It was like it's not funny. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't notice Everything the smirk. Doesn't have to be swashbuckling. You know, guy from Tangled. Every um, once in a while, I get annoyed with the whole swashbuckling feel. Now, I was just glad that, you know, I, uh, I mean, I don't want to say I was glad he was concerned, but like. You but you know. were glad he was concerned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Too. Um, so, okay. So, <laughs> they go. I know her name. <laughs> I do you miss guys, though. Don't get mad at me. I'm being a one. I know. Guy. Don't get mad at me either. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Um, we're gonna have to make another video. If you guys make fun of us, we're gonna make another video just to make fun of the comments. Um, <laughs> that would be fun. Like when people on Jimmy Kimmel or something read the Twitter. I know. The I know. Nasty tweets. I know. <gasps> oh my god. We're very lucky, you guys, because we don't really have a lot of nasty. If at all, we've had. We've only had like over the years only one or two really no the comments yeah. this week have been great too um but let's, so let, let's get through this get, get through it okay um so what was i gonna say i don't remember um but okay so claire might not be able to come back then jamie starts talking about like if something happens to me it was like jamie like we're focusing on claire here you know we already we already have like determined that you can't get sucked into the portal so what are you talking about, like, if something happens to you? Like, chill out, bro. I guess he means if he, if he dies. Um, do you think he if, was, Do you think he... Well, how is he going to die? Because, oh, God bless him. I think he's dead. What was his name? Who was the actor who was in The Green Mile? Oh, oh, um, I can't remember, but he was in Sin City. So. Michael Clark Duncan. Yes. Lord of mercy on him. He passed away. I know, but well, why are you talking about him? Because I wanted to say, I kept, I just kept thinking of, I, I was thinking like, because Michael Clark Duncan might kill him. I mean, oh, remember how huge, him, you're, that's the manservant. Do you remember how huge Michael Clark yes. Duncan was? Yes. And you put Jamie next to him and he's like dwarfing Jamie. I mean, watching that beat up scene was like painful. I mean, and it's Jamie who's huge. That guy was monstrous. So that's how he could die. That guy could kill him. I know. Was Jamie like, um, was that a prop, a Jamie prophecy? Did he like meet with Margaret on the sly and she told him that? She was like, be careful of the manservant. Be careful of the manservant. Dinner Bandui. <laughs> Why do you think they call him Hercules? <laughs> okay. All right. So they they go through the cave and there's young Ian all tied up. And there's Gilas with her jewels 
and her sprinkly stuff and her like picture and she's of got Diana. salt salt around the picture like Sam and Dean and Supernatural right. and her gas can that she's like pouring all over her Ian. oh that upset me I, I was know. like oh that'll never come out of your hair <laughs> <laughs> um and so Jamie so so Hercules has the gun on them but like come on Hercules like you really think it's gonna stop Jamie Fraser come pff, come on come on come I kind of won i I wondered a few times. Um, that was so, like watching some kind of WWE. <laughs> so, so he gets a gun. Claire goes over to the Gila side of the pool, fights with her. She realizes that this pool is the portal. Jamie's getting beat up by Hercules. Claire and Gillis are all... La, 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 la. And finally, Claire gets the knife. She's got a knife. He took the knife out of the cheese. <laughs> Do you cheese? think you want some cheese? <laughs> My favorite um, line of she, all time. And she just swings that knife, and that's it. That's all she wrote for Gillis. I'm reading my notes. Wow, I've skipped so much, Tracy. When you lead, I don't say any of the stuff that I write well, down. Well, tell, tell me. I, it's hard. No, because I skipped it. This is back at the crazy dance. Um, From last week? No, the crazy dance, that the, the tribal dance. Oh, that was oh, like oh. The, like the crazy Scots dance. Um, all right, keep going. I mean, you can use some of the good things that you do too when you live tweet. If you guys haven't noticed by now, I pull all the jokes from this from this yeah, recap yeah. and I use even them in my mine. live tweeting. Even mine. <laughs> well, I've been known to steal some of your jokes. One week you used a title, a, a name I gave someone, and I was like, you stole my best name. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i am like so allergic to something in this room i can't even stand it okay Wait, jamie's fighting with a man so, right, so, so yeah. ridiculous this dude could crush her crush him i guess um well jamie the, has the superhuman jamie strength he is the king of mine don't forget not that night um, um the pool is the portal i wanted to dive myself right into that pool. i know they're probably like it's really hot and it's really hot in the cave and uh. all right so claire like gets that like you know lightsaber or whatever the hell she's got and she's just like well how about when she first when she pushes galas with such force and goes <laughs> jamie sees that and it's like popeye spinach yes because he might as well have gone <laughs> because he sees his Claire fighting off, and he's like, "Oh!" And he gets the yes. the strength. He gets of, of ten Grinches plus two of ten Michael Clark Duncan's Lord of Mercy on him, <laughs> and just takes Hercules and just yeah. So yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. So Galus is dead. Um, it's weird how dead Galus looks like. Like a department store mannequin. <laughs> I was like, okay, clearly Lottie had to be on a film set <laughs> because it was there, like they there just wasn't went, a stunt double that they could use. It like, was like they went over to Macy's and they were like, "Can I into like the lingerie section?" Can and I borrow like, this mannequin I'll for two her. hours? <laughs> I'll take her wig too. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I was like, this is like that awful Night Stalker episode from back in the day with Cole Shack with the, with the mannequins all over the place. Um, yeah, it was a little weird. Yeah. Was, that was a little strange. And they splattered the blood just to try and make it look, but I was like, mm, it was um, weird. Um, talk for two seconds because I'm going to blow my nose. Okay. She's blowing her nose, you guys. But... So at this point, you know, I guess I probably shouldn't pass where we are, but you know that that mannequin thing on the ground is um, almost decapitated. So then you start going, wait, when in this um, season have I remembered? Do I remember hearing about somebody being almost decapitated? Oh, yeah. Joe Abernathy. J. Abs. Okay. J. Abs and the skeleton. J. Abs and the skeleton? She's almost decapitated, and you're like, "Woo, that's when do I remember another person being?" Oh yeah, J. Abs had the uh, the um, skeleton. Skeleton, I also, right? I also have to interrupt myself 
and say that I thought it, found it fascinating that Claire um, Galis was married to somebody named Abernathy. Excuse me, to someone named Abernathy. So clearly, um, Joe is a descendant of. You know, it was like the Thomas Jefferson thing well, where one of the slaves yes. most likely um, at some point was with the jerky Abernathy. You know what I mean? Well, no, 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 no. I, I, somebody in the comments somewhere or maybe said their, name, their, their names, names were Abernathy, Abernathy yes. because his name because was Abernathy. Because they were Abernathy slaves. So, okay, that makes sense. So they took the name Abernathy and that's where, yes. Now, I don't know. Somebody said that you find that out like in book you know, I don't know what book. I don't. I don't remember really. But like, and that's not really remember, a spoiler because again, know. another reason why I just love Diana Gabaldon Inside yeah. Out and Backwards because I found that storyline fascinating. I know. When that skeleton, I'm like, uh, I mean, I love all the science aspects. So when that skeleton came, and then you get to the because you are sort of in the middle of the book, like, oh, that's interesting, but you're not really paying attention to it. And then to come to find out at the end of this thing that that skeleton is Galus Duncan. Right. I mean, and right. that, and that Claire, and I thought they really did a great job with Claire's reaction. Once again, yes. Claire took a life. I took a life. Yes. So Claire is off to the side, kind of freaking it out Stick in her head a little. Her hands shaking with the knife. Were you like, she's going to drop the knife? She's I thought drop she was going to drop the knife too. And she, she never not. dropped the knife. She did not drop the knife, but she was in her head like, oh my God, I, that's, and it's hitting her, and she's thinking, you're waiting for Joe's voice to right, come back. Right, 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 and right. she's like, that's the skeleton. That's why I knew. But remember her comment? This girl was murdered. <laughs> right, And he's right, like, murdered? Right. How do you know that? And meanwhile, Claire's like, I'm a murderer. She's like, this is no accident. This girl was murdered. <laughs> <laughs> um... Did you guys, did anybody guess it but way back then? Way back when, when they were looking at the skeleton and the bones and stuff? Like, did anyone guess who it might be that didn't read the book? Tell us in the comments. Um, I have to go back to, I mean, you probably already talked about, like, that they, like, untie Ian, whatever. And as as they're all, I like. Didn't, I didn't even get that point. Oh, okay. So they untie Ian, and meanwhile, Claire's, like, here in the stones or the, the portal or whatever. And yeah, what was that all water. about? Because she hears the stone, she hears the sound in her head. No. Why would she? I guess because of Brie being on the other side, she's being pulled. Because well, that I could thought, be it, yes. Wouldn't, because... you, wouldn't you think she'd be like, um, Jamie Fraser's back there. <laughs> I'm going to turn myself around <laughs> because I don't want to go there. But I guess because of Brie. Yes, because it's what she said she's before. Hold that she, there. That that's what steers her. Like knowing that somebody is on the other side mm-hmm. who who really wants her to be there. Yeah. Um, I, so I think I, I, get, I get that. I didn't miss that. Um, well, and don't you always come back to the ghost? Don't you always come back to the Highlander from Outlander in the very first book and season? Not, you know, not really and, here. No. and Diana Gabaldon has always said that all will be revealed at the end of the series. When the seer, when she finishes writing the last book, all will be revealed about the ghost. So when she said, I feel like something from the other side, you know, I, I don't need a sacrifice because something from the other side is pulling me. Someone right. on the other side is. So I almost wonder if that'll factor in too. Maybe. Um, because what pulled her the first time around? That's true. That's true. Well, my theory has always been, and I forget if I've talked about it on the TV show or not, but it's not, and it's not really a spoiler to say that my theory has always been that Claire's, Claire's supposed to be in the 18th century, that she was born in the 18th century and that for some weird, strange reason, that, that she's really traveled four times and not three times. And the first time was that was when she was very small, traveled either with Uncle Lam or with her parents mm-hmm. or something, but that she's always supposed to be in the 18th century. And the going back originally was her, like, like the course correction. Like that's, she's always supposed to be with Jamie and she's always supposed to be in that time. That's right. just my theory. Like, that's not like, that's just, 
you know, that hasn't been proven one way or the other in the books or whatever, that's always proven. <laughs> you know, that's just my proven. hypothesis. If we're being scientific, like Claire. Yeah. Um, so wait, I have to say, um, I forget I was going to say something about Claire. Um, I don't remember what it was. But I, I, I had to laugh at one point where after they free Ian, oh, that's right. So Claire, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Claire's hearing the, the, the voices in the, in the stones or in the pool or whatever. And then you see Jamie kind of take her hand and that draws her back. That draws her like out of whatever is trying to get her to go in there. <clears throat> and Jamie's like, you know, let's get the F out of Dodge. And you see what Ian is doing. He's like gathering up all the jewels. Because Ian is the smart one of all of them. Ian's the one that's like, even after all the trauma he's been in, he's been through, he's like, yeah, we gonna need these jewels. I'm, you better believe we ain't leaving all away with them here. I'm, I'm scooping them all up. I love that. I laughed that whole way through. These are good jewels. <laughs> <laughs> these, can, these can come in handy someday. And I have that they ran out and they had a cute moment and I have in the foliage and in all caps, I have not tundra because <laughs> i kept saying in the tundra and so i got at you for that i know i got no she didn't yell but it was it was funny um and she's right because i even knew while i was saying it like wait that i just have to give you a little background on that really quick is that when i was younger i must have got tundra mixed up and thought that was tundra and so last year keelan was in honors biology and she had to do this biome project over the summer for the class and one of them was tundra and i was like i always thought tundra was like you know like, like the jungle like i didn't oh my how did i think tundra like tundra's barren tundra's it's dry like, it's earth. like scrub and I'm like calling, but, but you guys, I can't get it out of, I just have to call it Tundra. <laughs> um, okay. So let's get a step away from the Tundra. We're back on the <laughs> Artemis. We're back on the Artemis. And I do have to say, yes, that little moment with um, Jamie and Claire and Ian where he, Jamie's like, let's go back to the Artemis. But first, I must hold you both. I have both. to hold you both. Oh. Aww. 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 So cute. So cute. So cute. Okay, we're back on the Artemis. Jamie is shaving. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> this was kind of, yeah, I, I, I agree with you about this. Last week, I told you guys I would tell you whether or not something that I wanted to see happened, whether I got to see <clears throat> it and I didn't get to see it. <laughs> what was yours? The difference of, you know, the way they did it. This, this. When you're reading the books, you guys, Dinah Gabaldon is so descriptive for those of you who haven't read the books that you can smell them right through the book because she is very good at telling you, setting the scene, right. not just what you're seeing, but what you're hearing and what you're smelling. And she's always like, you know, wood smoke was always one of her favorites and right, this right, and that. Right. Well, by the time these two, these two have been on ships. They've been through the non-tundra. They've been everywhere, not showered. They stink. And you know they stink. And you're like, oh, my God, they stink. And at the end, and I don't remember, forgive me, I'm not going to be detailed enough. I don't remember the details, but I do remember. That, and, and again, I could be in the wrong spot. But I do remember that you're just exhausted like them. They're like falling asleep. They're done. But I do remember that Claire like walks in. She, they go to a, like a plantation. And there's a room that they are given. And I could have sworn they slept first. And then she like walks into this room. And there's – it's a big – imagine you guys like uh, today's type of resort with like the – windows are wide open and there's like breezes from the ocean and the whole room is white and the bed is massive and the bed is white. The sheets are white. Everything's white, possibly netting. I can't remember. And there is a, I believe I want to say like a clean shaven, clean, uh, recently bathed James Alexander, Malcolm McKenzie Fraser, not a stitch on laying on the bed. 
And at that point, you are so grossed out by the way everyone smells and how everyone's so dirty that you're like, (sighs) it's like the greatest nirvana. So lovely what we did get. I don't know if it's. So you're totally mixing, mixing metaphors here. That part, I believe. And I could be wrong, too. I thought it was toward the end after this happened. In between all of that, I thought and- that that part was was around the time when when they were at, still like around the governor's ball. Um, I don't think so, but if it was, either way, I didn't get it, and I was bumming. Okay. But I'm again, you guys, I'm not complaining. I don't want anyone saying, "Oh my God, you were never happy." I mentioned it last week that that was one thing that I was waiting. And I kind of said to myself, they're probably not going to do that. Right. But it's just one of those little things that when you're reading the books that you loved and you didn't get to see it. So I recall saying something similar. Like there are, you know, many parts that everybody likes. Everybody likes different parts. I think we were talking about the fan representative. And we were saying, or I was saying, how... Um, it would be really hard to do because every fan likes something different and you're never going to please everybody. I said, I am fully 100% of the mindset that one of my favorite things in this book is not going to be represented and that's okay. Whatever. Guess what? It was. The minute, the minute I saw it, I sat up on the couch and said to Tom, oh, Tracy's getting her part. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to tell you guys, that like a lot of people in Voyager, we already saw a turtle soup, and a lot of people are like, that is the hottest part of the book. No, you're all wrong. This part that we just saw was, in fact, the hottest part of the book. So you're saying that happened on the boat? Yes, it 100% happened on the boat. Then I'm, my time, t- my timing's off. Yes, 100% this part happened on the boat. Now, there are a few differences. First of all, I mean, I will, I will give my like, like, like ten words or less review of the scene, which I thought was fabulous. It was different in some ways from the book, but I thought it was still all good. Um, in the book, the whole point of this, of of the, the of what happens in the book, I don't think they do it for real. I think that. Jamie talks about what he is going to do. And the reason they don't do it for real, I think, I think, and I could be think, remembering this wrong, is that the room that they're in really is, like, tiny and cramped and uncomfortable. And this part happens right, actually, not, not at the part where they are now, but at the part where they are back on the Artemis after, um after they found Claire and Fergus and Marcy got married and they sail, they're sail, now they're sailing to Jamaica. And, you know, I won't spoil this part just in case people are, are going to read the book to see how it's different. But let's just say that the beard growth that Jamie had that he was going to shave off was a lot longer than four days beard growth, which I would guess is like pretty much like, Tuesday for Jamie like like and yeah it wasn't like 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 scratchy stubble it was like it was a full-on Santa Claus was it a beard it was was, uh, I think it was a full-on Santa Claus beard that he I think it was definitely more it would have been softer it was probably more in line with God help us all (laughs) bestial beard I knew where you were. It was going. not Dunbonnet Beard. No, it was not that bad. But it was every bit of Bastille Beard. In which case, I would have been like, shave that MF, like, right the F off, bro. But do you think that the the watching audience who didn't read the books like, no, caught the on? O- the watching audience is still like this. <sighs> I'm just, I'm just being a bitch and breaking this no, down. No, because of... why she wanted him to leave the beard. Yes, that was a little. Do you think? Oh, I don't think. I the... see what you mean. I she didn't. Mean. She didn't say enough. The I watching audience who did not read those books does not really quite grasp why she wants him to right. leave the beard. Well, they also don't quite grasp that there is a beard there because I. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I watched I was it like... on HD on my computer, 
on Jeez. my big screen and I'm like, beard? What beard? What, that what? would hurt. That would hurt. What? Right? What? His his stubble. It was just stubble and it would hurt. Right. Right. And, 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 um, yeah, I didn't understand because of, you know, they're always wearing all those bad wigs. Can't we get some Lee press on beard for him? It was just a little weird because she's like, oh, you know, no, leave it. Cause it's so hot. Like, and I'm just like, it's four days beer growth. Like when doesn't he have four days beer growth? Yeah. Whereas in the book, it really was like, you know, a month's beard growth or whatever. See, so, so, but I be this in my... I didn't take it to be a big fluffiness. I took it to be <clears throat> long enough that it wouldn't hurt, but short enough that it wouldn't just be a whisper. It would right, be a little right, bit right, more right, of a, right. Ah. right. But I mean, again, I just, I took it as like, hasn't Claire seen that much beard on Jamie, like a bajillion times before? Like it's not unique. Is it? Like, that's how I sort of. Yeah, that's true. Well, it. he, See again the book. Or do you reading, think he's more like neat and natural and you know? I, yes, I think that the the, the well again, again the non book readers don't realize that James Fraser has a thing about being clean clean shaven. He does not like to have growth on his face. He likes to be clean shaven. That is mentioned throughout the series right. a bunch of times. So yes, I think he's. I don't think she sees that very often. Okay. All right. That's good. Then that's, then that's fine. So, um, so yeah. So in the book, there's, there's, so anyway, in the book, you know, he's got this like incredibly like bigger, like more Santa Claus beard. I think he's also really dirty and stinky. And they're just like, it's, it's the kind of situation where they're not, they're not at liberty to do it right now. Yeah. So instead, he tells her everything he's going to do just like he did in, in this, in this particular instance. I, so, so they do do it on, in this, in the show, but I still loved it. I, 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 I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was, you know, probably one of the hottest scenes we've gotten. Um, what are your thoughts? I liked it. I mean, I liked it. I didn't, I wasn't like, this is I don't one of, to... let me let me say this. This isn't one of your favorite parts in the book, right? Um, it was cute. I, you know, it's it's a nice. It's... I I would say that this is top three or five of hottest scenes in the whole series for me. And they don't even in the book at least they don't even really do anything. It's just like they just like talk about you know what he's gonna do. And, and it's the anticipation, I guess, whatever. Yes, 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 which is nice, which is nice. Um, but I liked that, that that it was playful, and yet, you know, they were into it, and yet laughing. And I liked the whole, you know, when he says, and then you make those squeaking noises, and, you know, even though they're, like, all getting busy, she's still, like, laughing and being like, you know, what the hell, squeaking noises? I don't make squeaking noises. It's like, oh, yeah, you make squeaking noises, or whatever. Um, squeaky, more like grunty. Um, remember I said the one week that it's always like the two of them. It's always like, Ugh. um, I, I thought it was great. I <laughs> thought it was great. I was just so glad to get that scene because I never in a million years thought I would get that scene ever, ever, ever. I didn't think that that was like, again, I thought people were like, turtles, and, turtles and, blah, 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 blah. and nobody ever really talks about that scene. So I just figured like they wouldn't put it in and they put it in and it was like a five minute long scene. And I was like, loving every minute of it. It loving every minute of it. It went on and on and on. It reminded me of the reunion sex when that took forever to get undressed. That to me was way long. This worked because it still was like, it was a it was a narrative. It was a it was a step by step process. First, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. Then we'll get to this. Then we'll get to this. Then we'll get to this. Then we'll see what noise it is that you don't make. Like it it had a beginning, middle, and end. Whereas the undressing was just like undress, undress, <laughs> undress, undress, undress. Which undress, a lot of people loved. Undress. Yep, which a lot, a lot of people a lot of people loved. Um, so. Thank you, Matt Roberts. 
Thank you, Tony Graffia. Thank you, Ron Moore. Thank you, Diana, for writing it. And you made Tracy very happy. Yes, thank you, you all, for making Tracy very happy. And that's where I stopped <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> Did you have a cigarette? No, I told you. I was text when I cause I texted Carol that when she's like, Are you ready to go? I was like, I just that part that part I put in capitals. That part just started. So do not disturb me for the next five minutes. Um, I believe <laughs> that my statement was how's it going? <laughs> I knew she go has, was there she somewhere. Has, she has turned, how's it going? <laughs> Three words. Four, if you want to count the contraction. Into, are you ready to go? <laughs> um, but then when I was going to text you that I was re- that I finished it, I tried to find on the iPhone, like some sort of like little like, um, you know, cigarette gif. And there's nothing on the iPhone. I searched everything and I couldn't find it. What is that? I can't. Oh, Lord John. I sent that to her. Lord of John. Lord of right. John. All right, your turn to take over because I have no more. Notes. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Look, everyone, I get the last scene. <laughs> um, gets her on dry land, and what noises she would make. Um, looks out the window and is like, "Huh, I think a storm's coming." And then oh. mere seconds later, she's horizontal holding on to the flagpole. Mere seconds later, here comes George Clooney and Marky Mark. Again. Again. Why do you think he texted you? And I was like, I was like sitting there going, right now you're somewhere out there on the goddamn deep blue stick. And, and at one point I literally screamed, look at your facts. <laughs> Look at your back! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! The, 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 now the Andrea Gale, I mean the Artemis. <laughs> you know, I did love Claire's horrification because every time I watch a movie like that, when like those monstrous waves, and I'm like, well, I can't even take our boat out in the ocean. I, I've told you guys before, little boat, whatever. We'll go out on the, we went once in the ocean and I said, take me back. And I am not going in the ocean again, because even when it's calm, there's these rollers, you know, I'm like, the, well, you have and like I, a six seat, you know, you know, fishing boat. Like I this love is like a big boat. It uh, wouldn't matter. I've because, been out on the ocean on a cruise line and you can't feel a thing because, oh, you can in that because Claire is standing there like this. And I was like, thank God someone finally, like, realistically is telling the story of a monster storm at sea. Because if you're in that size boat they're in, and that huge thing, um, I thought it was really well done. I thought it was, re- at one point I turned to Tom and I went, this is cool. Did you like, think that they, like, broke into, like, you know, the Sony vault at one point and just, like, we're like they won't wreck. They won't need these outtakes from the perfect storm. <laughs> Let's oh, just God. take them. <laughs> oh, oh! Did I see John C. Riley at one point? <laughs> I seriously was like yelling, "Look at your facts!" Um, <laughs> so it was very perfect storm. Yeah, you guys, if you haven't seen the perfect storm, just. Literally Google, go go on to YouTube and type in perfect storm end or something. <laughs> anyway, but um, I had to laugh at how he was like yelling at Marceline and them to stay under, stay down below. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, hell no, because if this thing's going under, I'm not getting stuck below it. Right. I'm not getting, if right. this sucker flips, right. I'm not getting right. stuck in that hole. What do we do on I'm, Titanic? We go all the way to the very top and we stay there. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And then the water's going to pull you under. That ship's going to suck us down. Take a deep breath when I say. You all need a ton. Jack Dawson in his spare time is like a marine biologist, just (laughs) FYI. Yeah, I tell my Tom all the time (laughs) how awesome he is because I go, you would have told me that. That Tom is like, he knows a little bit about everything. He'll be like, I don't know a lot about everything, but I know a little bit. 
he would totally have turned to me and been like, all right, the shit both is gonna gonna go down. Suck you, down. <laughs> you need to kick your feet. Carol, promise me you're going to kick your feet because this boat's going to suck us under. I swear to God. So Tom would have been good on the Artemis during the perfect storm. Yes. So they, um, <clears throat> is this really where you stopped it? Yeah. So they, it's funny because I sort of today's did too. They, um, <clears throat> are in this crazy storm and you know, Claire's going and now I'm yelling, Laura, did you ever see sleeping with the enemy? Um, oh my God, a million movie, years ago. Movie, you guys with, um, Julia Roberts. Oh, when you're a jet, that's part of that movie too. Yeah. And I, I swear to God, that's how it felt when all of a sudden he looks and Claire's not there. And, um, he, the two of them end up in the water and they're holding on to something. And, and luckily there was enough room for Jamie and she let him on it. No, she's actually, that's not what happened. She's floating, floating, just like in the very beginning of the show. And the thing that freaked me out is that her, you know, the hair is doing this. And I'm thinking to myself, Ooh, is Tracy, right? Is that a wig? Does she have the wig on under the water? And she's kind of narrating and she's like, Oh, the way it feels, blah, 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 blah. And she kind of likes it. Like she's drowning and she's well, kind of like. People always say that in books. Like when you drown, <laughs> I mean, this is like, I don't know, but that it's not like, like what's that movie? It was another James Cameron movie. And it's about like people who can breathe underwater or they, they, they teach you how to breathe underwater or whatever. And they say it's actually a very like calming kind of feel. Okay. Well, all I know is she's sinking and she's tied to something that's right. sinking with her. Right. And he came out of nowhere and there he is from far away just coming. It, that was a really neat scene. So he's coming. He gets her. And I'm thinking to myself, I just joked around the other day that I can't hold my breath for more than like 10 seconds. So I would have been done for. But he undoes her, gets her up to Makes the Makes out a little bit with her. Don't forget about that. Um, they have time to make out yeah, for a bit. Yeah. Ma- kisses her. And then the camera goes up, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, okay, now it's Tom Cruise and um, and Nicole Kidman going to show up? Because I'm seeing far and away right now. When, when, when Nicole Kidman, no, is it him? Yeah, it's him. It's him that dies, right, and comes back. Yes. And, she, and Spoiler the, alert. You go up. <laughs> sorry, guys. You go up, and then you go back down again. And you go this way. <laughs> I love so, that's a great movie, you guys. It's a very underrated movie. I in my I opinion. love Far and Away. I love that movie much. so much. I've never seen anything like you in all my <laughs> living life. Um, so he pulls her to the top. They're floating. He kisses her. Claire, wake up! I found that to be very, very realistic yes. too. Yeah, like that was that had they had me. I mean, tears. I'm yeah. crying. Um, and I know what happens and I'm crying. Right. So, um, next thing you know, they're washed up on the shore and you're, he's thinking she's dead. It's very like emotional. And then next thing you know, she coughs and I'm thinking to myself now, like you must <clears throat> I mean, have spent hours, but now is that how it would work that you'd still, <laughs> and then right. kind of, <laughs> but also, and also, I mean, you you kind of know like whether she was dead at that point. Like if she was dead at that point, she would have been She'd dead be for a blue. while. She'd be like kind of cold and stiff at that point. She'd so. be blue, yeah. But you so, know, and, it's not as dramatic that way. So right, right, yeah. right. So they wash up on the beach. Excuse me. Oh my god, I'm so sorry that came out of nowhere. Um, and now I'm gonna do it too because I just watched you do it. His family comes toward them. They start talking to them. They're really embarrassed. They're like, um, I know this is going to sound wackadoo, but where are we? And, and they're, they're like, like, oh, you're in the little community of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they're like, um, no, what country? <laughs> <laughs> what part of the world is this? Yeah. So what they find out. planet are we on? They find out they're in Georgia. And they also find out that the Andrea Gale, I mean, Artemis, um, actually ran aground like four miles down the road four miles down the road or something so you know that everyone's probably well you don't know if everyone's okay you're just at this point if you don't read the books then you're just happy that Claire and Jamie are okay but you're pretty much assuming because of the way they didn't say like oh yeah no survivors or anything like that so you're like all Do right you have probably- a minute there where you know it's just Jamie and Claire and they're talking about like the Artemis like whatever and you're just like holy fuck sorry people but I'm gonna swear here holy fuck 
they're rebooting this entire show. It's just Jamie and Claire. Everyone else is gone. And they are, like, going to completely... Oh. My. Wait, God. Were, you, were you really guessing that? I, for, for about 10 seconds, I thought... Oh. My. God. Um... And then I, they talked about the Artemis, and I was like, oh. "No, I never in a million years would have thought they would have killed off Marsley and and Fergus and Ian and, and uh, Ian yeah. and Ian." Yeah, yeah, no. But I will say this: when they told them where they were, there was a look on Jamie's face, and I thought to myself, "Like he's." They're both realizing this is a new beginning. Like we're away from all of it. We don't. I'm not wanted here. I'm not meaning, you know, by the law, like we can start again. Right. Like we can, we can, in that moment at the very end, you realize it's taken the entire season, 13 episodes for these two to get back to where they were 20 years ago. Yeah. And now here they are on this beach, just the two of them facing the world together and there's there's the two of us now yeah that's yes. what i'm thinking they really they really um solidified i don't know why i'm thinking clasped grasped no they just they they really expressed that in such a way that you just sat there like oh it's just the two of them and it's the two of them now it's okay it's all right it's the two of us there's the two of us now right Oh, I thought that was beautiful. I really liked it a lot. I did. Even though it was different from the book. The book, it's like they're in some room in some house. They're in someone's well, house. Not, it wasn't that different. In the book, Well, they, I liked it. I liked it better. Not I better. But I I'm mean, never it, really going to say I like anything that much better than Diana Gavaldon because that would be blasphemous. But I will say that I liked it just as much, if not. Right. They know, were in someone's house because Claire like, got her, like Claire broke her leg or something like that. I will yeah. say I laughed out loud at one point, which was that. You know, the little family is like, oh, are you okay? Like, do you do this, that? And where are you from? And like, like and they freak them out so they bad. The little so family. Out, like, oh, no, it's like down, you know, down the road a piece. Okay. Okay. Bye. And they just like, start walking away. The oh, little look, family. You're going to leave these two people who like are clearly drowned rats. You're going to oh. like leave them and not like be like, well, come with us. Well, like, you know, no, they're just like, bye. <laughs> yeah. The little family was like. Um, y'all are a little weird, so we're gonna get going. We, you're fine with your breathing. You're good. We we thought that one. We thought the missus might have a problem, but she seems to be okay. So, so we're gonna take off. So you know, bye bye. We addy. Bye bye. It was oh, I laughed right the hell out loud. Um, I liked how the little girl was like playing, and then it was like, oh look, what's that? <laughs> Who's this like red haired? you know, hottie McGee. Um, and that was it. And then we saw the big, the big, you know, tracking shot over the land and the, um, the area. And that was it. That was amazing. I loved that. That was a great shot. It was almost, almost kind of like at the very end of the starting where they're riding the horse across the, um, Scottish moors or wherever the hell they are. Um, that's kind of the new Scottish moors. Um, and that's it. That's all she wrote for season that's three. That's all she wrote. And um, I can't wait to see how they're going to start season four. I thought this was a great episode. I really did. I really was very happy I, with this oh, episode. Although, what did you think about how very much was shoved into one episode? Like, I thought to myself, my God, this is how many pages of this book in one episode. Like, it's not really that many pages. You'd be surprised. I really felt like, oh my god, this was so much shoved into one it's episode. It's really not. You'd be very surprised. I mean, I could like pull the book out right now and tell you if you want to know, but it's really not. No, that's okay. It's maybe. I don't even think it's a hundred pages. Honestly, I don't even think it's that much. Yeah. Um. But I really liked it. I thought it was great. I thought it was very true to the characters. Um, I thought it moved really well. Um, it got it trimmed a lot of the fat that needed to be trimmed. And, you know, it leaves everybody in an amazing place for season four. And I, so, I, that was another thing. A few times while watching this, I was like, 
oh my god, season four is going to be so good. Right. So it'll be interesting <laughs> for non-book readers. You know, are we what going? Do you think, what are we going nine or ten seasons with this thing? I don't think we're going to get nine or ten seasons, but I th- I think we're going to get season five. That's my my view is season but, five will happen. But I need seasons seven and eight to be on TV. I was thinking today about season seven for reasons that I'm not going to say. Um, but that I can very easily. <laughs> I need them. <laughs> I need season seven. I need it. I don't know how they're going to do season season six in like that that book in one season because that book is like 1300 pages i put it this way like i know four and <sighs> five i don't know i i kind of wondered if they were gonna like get rid of some stuff and characters and shove four and five into like one somehow um i don't know i i, I want i want these later seasons i know i know look All at I me know. i'm like i'm like flabbergasted if they could if they my Come guess is that this video is more than two hours at this point. So. My guess is that this video is longer than four and five. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking we need to wrap it up because Good, I'm it is tired. also 1130 at night. And we're you tired guys, if and... you stuck with us, you have to be tired too. I, know. I still haven't even watched last week's of us you guys i don't even make it to the end of the week <laughs> i try and watch them on the treadmill that is when you can get on the treadmill so uh, i know yep. i know so I you guys it's been an either. awesome season thank you so much for watching thank you so much for laughing along with us and this season crying along with us a little bit and we love you guys I and we're gonna miss you guys season a great season three but i think it's been by far the best season of my own purgatory um, oh, like not even close because the comments have been fabulous. The discussion has been fabulous. Um, you know, we've had like, it's certainly, I think been the most challenging season for us in terms of just like getting our butts in this seat, getting these glasses in our hands and turning the camera on and actually doing this. But, this wasn't so hard for me. <laughs> um, but we did it, you know, we got one more to edit, so but it'll get done. We did it. Um, it was a huge challenge, and I think that we, um, you know, we're like strong, confident women, Carol. Like you go, you go, Carol. You go, Tracy. <laughs> you guys, I just want to say again, and I don't want to get into the whole thing again, but thank you guys so much because the comments have been so amazing about Tom. And I, we appreciate it more than you know. And you are going to be seeing Tom. Tom does have every intention of, of making an appearance in a future video and not waiting until next season. So yeah, well, Tracy well, and I are going to be doing some stuff during Droughtlander. And you are going to be seeing Tom. And he cannot tell you how much he appreciates you guys. Number one, you caring in your kind words for him. But also you keeping me sane. Because he needs someone to keep his wife sane. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so leave us comments for this episode. Tell us on the blog, tell us on YouTube, tell us on Facebook, tell us on Twitter. Um, yeah, we're <laughs> 2018. We're, we're going to, we're going to get ourselves in gear and we're going to figure out like how to like bring, bring, bring this, and bring, wait, which side are you on? You're here, right? Bring that, bring that. To wait, you. hang on. <laughs> Yeah, right like wait are you over here, here um anyway bring it to you on a more frequent basis we're like really gonna figure this out because it's just too much fun to do this like it really is um so well it's it's all good we'll make it work maybe we need an intern carol oh my god does kaylin want to be our intern <laughs> no i didn't think of that till just now like wouldn't that be awesome Oh my God. I've thought about it many times. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to like blog posts. Like I, I haven't, I miss it. I miss, ty- I miss writing yeah. and I miss like, I miss those, my blog posts from when I was reading the books. It was fun. It t- I had napping children back then. My life was a lot more simple. I, I, I write all damn day long. So uh, this is why I like to talk when I'm not at work. So, all right, you guys. 
It's been an awesome season. Thank you so much for being amazing. Um, and if you guys have any suggestions for us of what you'd like to see, hear, anything, let us know in right. the comments. If you're right. like, you know, these guys should blah, 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 write it down. Next week is going to be a lot of, it's certainly a lot of calmer for me. Hopefully it's calmer for Carol. Maybe we'll do like a special, like, you know, um, vid like comments, like, like respond to comments episode or something like that. Oh yeah. We're definitely doing that. Yeah. You guys, we're going to put some of you guys on videos too. Yeah. Because the technical um, arena has grown. So there are more, we have more things at our fingertips. Because Carol's like, ways. I know how to edit now too. Yeah. And we have more ways to get you guys on. I think I might run a contest. How much fun would that be? I know, right? Okay. All right. We're going to go, you guys. Have an awesome week. Have an awesome time with episode uh, 313. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, you guys. Oh, my God. That's true. It's like a couple weeks away. Yep. Get that shopping done. Get that baking done. Get that decorating done. Have a happy and healthy holiday. And Lord the healthy. And we will see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.